Mark, uh, just give you an update on the uh, situation with the fire element of this uh, of the mine at the moment. Most of the surface area of the uh, of the mine, most of the fire of the surface area of the mine now is is, is extinguished. Uh, and what we're working on is quite numerous hot spots that are a little bit uh, deep seated. So we're working with the mine industry at the moment to actually dig out those hot spots to extinguish the fires. So that's what we're working on at the moment. But effectively, uh, we're still hopeful with a little bit of rain uh, in the foreseeable future, we'll be really, really be able to extinguish this fire. So as I say, most of the surface area has been extinguished and we're working on hot spots in the fire, which is all good news from our point of view. How are things looking for tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow we're preparing for, interesting enough, a bushfire around, uh, around the broader Gippsland area. We don't envisage there'll be too many difficulty, difficult problems with the actual mine itself because most of the surface area has been extinguished. Um, and so it'll be just business as usual for us to continue to find those hot spots and dig them out and extinguish them. What, what proportion of the area that had been on fire do you think is extinguished now, Steve? Is it no, look, I, look 90, 95%. We've got two hot spots left. Uh, one was actually extinguished last night. Uh, we're, we've got one, one small spot left that we're working on at the moment. There's a lot of heat still in the mine and still some smoke coming up, but there's no actual fire. And some of that is emanating from deep spots within the mine that, as I say, we're digging, digging out. But look, uh, most of the surface area is extinguished, which is great from our point of view. And literally just one hot spot to Absolutely, out. yeah, one spot. Look, there's some other areas that are giving off smoke, but not from surface fire. It's, it's actually underground. Uh, we've got one, that, uh, one spot left in the mine that is still ex uh, has fire in it. But most of it is just hot um, now, and we're extinguishing those hot spots. But the, the, the work now is about finding deep, deeper bedded fire, digging it up, and extinguishing it. So we're right down to that sort of layer of trying to extinguish this fire. And how deep is some of that deeper stuff? Look, it's only uh, it, you know it wouldn't be more than a metre. Um, in fact, it's not even that in, in a lot of cases. It's about scraping the surface and and finding a bit of fire and, and extinguishing it. So we're uh, working pretty hard to do that at the moment. Um, which is pretty good news for us, so the, the, with big light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. You're still working towards Tuesday to have the fire declared safe, and does safe mean it's out? No, look, safe, it's, it's envisaged that potentially there'll be hot spots in this for some time, but certainly rain will help us without, without a doubt. We, we do hope by Tuesday, look, if, if I'm confident potentially even before that, we'll have all the surface extinguished, um, but we probably won't have all the hot spots extinguished underground by that period of time. So uh, for us, the fire is well and truly contained, or bordering on safe by that period of time. Absolutely. But they could the hot spots. Sorry, Rihanna, the hot spots um, could burn for, for weeks, or what, oh, what they, time frame we're talking? They could, um, but uh, we'll continue to work to dig those up and put them out because uh, there's quite a number of them. Uh, but it's just normal process that we would do in a, a fire such as this. When is the CFA likely to hand over management of the mine to the uh, operators? Well, it, it, uh, we, we will transition and uh, we're already working with uh, DHS to move to the recovery phase of this particular fire. Um, but we work all together. I mean, we don't, we don't walk away as such. Um, so even when it, it, it transitions into recovery, the fire agency, so it's not just CFA, the fire agencies will, will remain and support in both uh, engaging communities in making sure we're uh, um, uh, measuring the, the toxicity level, etc. So that all remains in place and we work in partnership, if you like, um, when that happens. So it's not a matter that we just pack up and walk away. We'll work, work together to make sure the community and the mine people are safe. What's the latest forecast in terms of the wet weather expected this weekend? Yeah, great question. Now, look, we're and, hoping... And, and what, what kind of impacts is it likely yeah, to have? Look, uh, we, we love rain, <laughs> I've got to say. There's about 10 mil on um, Saturday night, Sunday morning, and I hope that comes. Originally it was forecasted for a bit more than that. Uh, but certainly rain will help us, no doubt about that. Um, and it'll help, uh, uh, particularly on the base of the mine, on the floor of the mine, extinguish a lot of, uh, you know, it, it'll seep down and, and extinguish some of that deeper bedded uh, fire that we have. So. Pretty, uh, pretty keen to get some rain, I've got to say. So we will get a little bit on Saturday, Sunday night, but after that, there's nothing in the forecasted period that we're being told about. Um, so uh, we, I don't know if we can pray or we can do whatever we can for Huey to do the right thing by us. It would certainly be appreciated, yeah. All right, thank you. Well, as you've heard, the uh, air quality, unfortunately, has not been quite good enough over the last couple of days for us to lift our temporary relocation advice. Uh, I think we're almost there and as you can see today it's uh, the air quality is very good at the moment but just hasn't been quite consistently good enough over the last couple of days so as I've mentioned before we're constantly reassessing this we're constantly in touch with the Environment Protection Authority 
and we will lift that advice as soon as we possibly can. And I'm very hopeful that uh, with the progress, continued progress on the fire that you've heard, that, that that hopefully will be within the next few days. In the meantime, we've produced some uh, additional advice about cleaning up in anticipation of people returning to their homes in the southern part of Morwell. And of course, for people who uh, are there, have remained there, and for people in other parts of Morwell, we've produced some additional advice about, about cleaning up if there is significant amounts of ash around your property. And we have produced some information on how to fit a mask if you are cleaning up large amounts of ash, particularly if you have a heart or lung condition um, or are over 65, it might be a good idea to wear a mask to minimise your exposure to the fine dust particles. We must remember that the ash itself is not toxic, so it contains uh, normal compounds which you would normally find in ash, and it's fine to dig that into your garden to fertilise your garden. However, when you are cleaning up, it's important to try not to spread uh, the ash and dust around the place because you will generate um, fine particles into the air. So that's why we recommend, um, if possible, wet mopping or dusting rather than dry, rather than dry dusting. If you are sweeping large, large areas, try and sweep gent gently and then follow up with wet mopping. And particularly outside, don't use leaf blowers um, as that will just spread the, spread the dust around. Indoors, uh, you should use a vacuum cleaner with a, a special filter called a HEPA filter. Now, the Latrobe City Council has some of these available for loan, so you can contact the, the Latrobe City Council about those. And there will be further details about um, assistance provided for clean-up, which will be announced through the Latrobe City Council uh, next week, I believe. Is there any, any chance the health and relocation advice might be lifted this weekend, Doctor? Uh, no, I wouldn't anticipate lifting it before Monday. And, and what do you need? What do you need to, to lift it? Like, what kind of conditions do you need to lift it? Um, what kind of perhaps in terms of the air quality indicators from the EPA website, or what do you need? We do need uh, several days of good air quality from the EPA. Um, you will have seen probably yesterday that um, it, the air quality in the southern part of Morwell um, unfortunately went back into the poor for some parts of the day. Uh, but this morning, as I said, has gone back to good air quality. So we'd like to see that we'd like to see that continue for for a couple of days yet. Um, tell us about the health assessment centre. I'm still open here. Are people still coming in? Uh, people are still coming in. Um, over 1,900 people have attended since the first day it opened, and I believe um, 13 people have attended today. So the attendance has dropped off. Um, I think people who've attended have found it a very valuable service. And fortunately, we're still not seeing anything that would concern us in terms of serious health effects. There are some claims from a group in the La Trobe Valley that there's been up to 45 children um, to present at La Trobe Regional Hospital with breathing issues. Would you dismiss that as being untrue? The information that we've been, that's been provided to me from the La Trobe Hospital is that they haven't seen any, any increase in presentations which would be um, ascribed to any conditions from the fire. So I haven't heard that particular... Um, that particular statement, but that's certainly not the information that's been provided to me. But for people who are at risk uh, from uh, the smoke and ash, I mean, is it a good idea for them to be engaging in the cleanup? It would obviously be better if they were able to uh, get someone else to assist them. But if they if they don't have anyone to assist them, well, making sure they wear a mask, um, wear a gown and gloves and wash their hands carefully is the best way to protect themselves from um, the effects of breathing in the fine particles. And would you say, um, in terms of timing of clean-up, should you know, homeowners, should they start cleaning now, or, or, and, or, or in fact, should it be progressive, or should they actually just wait until, you, I guess, you lift the, the relocation advice? Oh no, I expect people will have been cleaning their houses you know, all along, and that's a good thing, to clean up progressively so that the ash and dust doesn't get to accumulate in large amounts. And do you think, have people followed the health advice? Have, has the community followed your, your warnings and, and um, listened carefully? Have, have, people, have many people left town? I do know that DHS has given out over 600 um, first relocation grants and about 270 second relocation grants. So once the um, the time for relocation went over a week. So I think that people have heard the message and, and accessed the necessary government help for that. That, that. I take it that means that some people have gone away twice and got two payments? That's correct, yes. Or stayed away and received a second payment to assist them staying away. 
Oh, we now we have Natasha from who's one of the staff from the centre here, who's going to um, demonstrate how to put on a P2 mask correctly, so you get a good fit. Thank <laughs> you. 